Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Instruments of Destruction, uh, which you can see is a very destructive game. Today, I've downloaded some interesting creations on the workshop that are going to provide a very unique view into de methods of destruction. Now, in case you missed it, this is something I built last time, which is literally a building catapulter or I guess spatula based off the way it actually looks. So if you missed that video, go check it out after this. I'll leave a link down in the description. So I got a handful of really interesting creations, some of them based off of real life historical things, and some of them aren't. For example, Chaos Kid, which sounds like a twisted metal character. And the description is just because why not throw a tantrum? And for some reason, creators are still showing up as unknown for me. Sorry for not being able to shout out your name here, but you know who you are if you made this. All right, here we go. Chaos Kid, huh? Let's look at some uses of cables. And oh my, oh, I think I see what's going on here. There's rockets attached to a whole variety sample pack of different weapons. We got spikes, we've got saws, We've got uh, spike balls and we've got hooks. So we've only got a couple of, a handful of buttons here. So let's see, are the saw turns on with that? And then, <laughs> it's way more entertaining to look at than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just gonna spin around for some reason, but this is way better. It's actual chaos. Okay, all right, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Let's get near a building and see what kind of destruction this is gonna create. This is actually a really clever idea. I love the stretchy rope too. All right, here we go. Look at that, just like the, it, it, it's chaos. This kid right here, I mean, I mean, it's not really like a kid necessarily. I mean, I guess if you imagine, if you imagine that uh, I can't, I can't even see my mouse. Wait, oh, that's because my mouse isn't showing up. Stop, stop, stop it, stop it, stop, stop, stop. Oh, I do have my mouse. I couldn't just, I just couldn't see it through all the particles. So just imagine that this is like the body, the head's kind of up here, and these are just arms. This kid just has a bunch of arms and he's just swinging around, throwing himself a tantrum. Uh, it's satisfying and chaotic all in one. I'm sure all the parents out there know the feeling of when your kid wants some ice cream and you just have to tell them no, and then this is the result. I'm sure your house is just as destroyed as well. No difference, zero difference. This is a perfect 100% analogy right here of what it's like to um, for a kid to throw a temper tantrum. All right, so that was the simpler of the vehicles that I have to show today. Up next, let's get historical, let's get accurate. This is the Schwerer Gustav, a World War II railgun. If I remember correctly, this was a railgun because it actually required rails to transport it. So before we use this thing, let's actually look at what made this thing a historical anomaly and also a historical failure. So here it is on allthatisinteresting.com. This is apparently the biggest gun ever built. So you can see here a real life model of what it looked like and you can even see it has two separate uh, tracks parallel to each other in order to transport this thing, which there's a funny little anecdote about that here. But calling this thing the biggest gun ever built probably isn't that much of an understatement because uh, apparently each shell weighed 20,000 pounds. And here you can see the scale of the shell next to a person. And somehow it was able to propel this 20,000 pound shell up to 30 miles away. I mean, it sounds incredible, but being the biggest gun in the world has its drawbacks. Cause turns out when you're really, really big, you're also very, very visible to the enemy. So it was impossible to hide from planes for air attacks and you can see it pr from pretty much anywhere elevated. And this is the funniest part to me. This is my favorite part of why this thing was such a failure. It needed custom tracks in order to move this thing around. So if you wanted to move this thing into position to fire at your enemy, you had to lay the tracks in advance, essentially leaving a big obvious message to your enemies like, hey, this is exactly where we're going. You can literally see every step of the way that we are going to take to get to our destination. I can just imagine the scout reporting back from the enemy just being like, okay, sir, I did some scouting. I know exactly where they're gonna be. Ah, good job. Now, how did you come across this information? Did you sneak into their base at night and steal their secret documents? Did you capture one of their soldiers and interrogate them until you got the information you needed? Did you use your psychic powers of foresight to see into the future and divine where they were going to be? Uh, well, 
Not exactly. I I just saw the train tracks and I just followed until they stopped. Ah, yes, uh, of course. That's what we pay you for. So yeah, basically this thing was so impractical. Not only that, but it required up to 4,000 men to operate this thing. Just to fire a single round, it needed 500 people. It was just a logistical nightmare. So let's see how it does in Instruments of Destruction. Oh my goodness, this thing actually moves. I didn't actually know if it had any uh, wheels or anything like that. So this is obviously not a completely 100% accurate histor historical replica. Oh, it doesn't even aim that high either. <laughs> All right, but um, I have no idea how this thing actually fires yet. I'm pressing the buttons. All right, T. Oh, <laughs> that is not 30 miles. And that, that is not a 20 ton shell. Oh, look at that. Okay. <laughs> They're so weak. This needs stronger propulsion. Oh, the turning is interesting though, isn't it? Lo oh, hold on, I can turn the magnet off and I can load up a whole bunch in advance. So I, I don't know if this is working or not. It's kind of, oh yeah, I can see them in there. You can see all of the rounds. All right, ready? Shotgun style. This is not a historically accurate. <laughs> at least, at least we got that to happen. Okay, I did not test this thing out beforehand, so I had no idea what to expect. I just, it just looked cool in the image, and I knew that this was something that people wanted to see for a while. This is not at all functioning how I thought it was going to function. This is kind of a cool though. I mean, I don't think it was on purpose, but still kind of cool. All right, yeah, I think uh, I think that's about as best as we're gonna get out of this thing for performance. <laughs> but I guess when you take a gun that was designed to have 4,000 people operating it and you just put it in the hands of one person, you don't get the same results. But it was fun learning about it at least. Let's get on to the next one. Okay, up next we have Miramaza Array. 16 blades, 32 thrusters, 243 tons of Y. I don't know what any of that means, but I'm here to find out. Whoa, this does not, I did not really know what this looks like. All right. Oh, the buttons, whoa, what? This thing looks so cool, but I don't really know what I'm looking at. What? What is it? What does it do? Okay, all right. I think A to get ready? Oh no, oh no, I think I did it wrong. I had two buttons and the description told me which order to press them in and I already forgot. I had a 50-50 chance of getting it right even if I didn't know. All right, E to get ready. Okay, I think I did get it right. I just didn't do it fast enough. There they go. All right, I think I should press them maybe at the same time. Um, or maybe A and then E. Uh, somehow this building survived all that. That was the longest and most drawn out destruction weapon I think I've ever fired. <laughs> what an interesting idea. So much of this is unnecessary like for functionality, but it's just it's just aesthetics. It's kind of awesome. I, I kind of want to do that again. Let's see if this building uh, gets hit this time. A and then E. Oh, watching it all fan out is really satisfying. Oh, that building's not, oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that building's gonna make it this time. I see ropes inside the building, but they're not really causing much damage. I don't know if these, it's weird. I, I, the ropes I thought did have a physical impact, but something weird is happening with them. Oh, these ropes have a very low amount of joints. You can see where they bend, which makes sense. Otherwise it would be extremely laggy. That, are we gonna get a very similar result somehow? This one's collapsing. It's gonna, it's almost gonna make this tower collapse. Yep, yeah, and now that tower's collapsing. 
We just had, how? With all of that chaos, we just had an almost identical result where this is the only surviving structure. That's kind of crazy. All right, well, that was an incredibly unique creation. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the net throwing creation, but that was just taking that to concept to an extreme. Okay, up next, I'm really curious about this one. It says Juggernaut. It looks just like a vehicle, but it says there's a surprise inside, and this was like top of the workshop, so no idea what to expect. Apparently, people like it enough. Ooh, this thing looks nice. All right, well, let's spawn it in. See what it feels. Oh my god, there's so many controls. Okay. Oh, it's got thrusters to go forward, which makes sense. Oh boy. Oh no, 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 no. Hold on. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to go into buildings yet. I gotta figure out what all these buttons are for. There's a lot of buttons here. No idea which one's gonna show me the surprise on the inside, though. All right, let's do E and Q. There's a mini vehicle inside. All right, T and R. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. G and F. All right, we can turn those ones separately. Y and H. Ah, there we go. Then we can shoot. Oh, what happened? Oh, the vehicle on the inside has its own set. Okay, well, hold on, 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 hold on. I think I can control this vehicle separately. There we go. And then this vehicle has its own cannons. That's so cool. For some reason, I've never even considered that in this game. Like the idea of having a vehicle within a vehicle. I've done that in Trailmakers a bunch of times. I don't know why I never thought about it in this game. It's totally like the remote control is totally a doable thing in this game too. This is so cool. This is a fun little creation. I actually like this. I love how fast you can shoot these cannons. Okay, but I have to see what happens if I uh, just drive the jug. It's called the Juggernaut. I have to drive it into something. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the turning. The turning's really cool. Ooh! Oh, the shockwave effect was so satisfying. All right, go, 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 go. There we go. All right, I mean, it does okay. It's not like the most juggernaut-y thing that I've experienced, but um, now we're in the water. I'm really curious if, I'm still really curious if boats are possible. I'm gonna have to do some boat experiments in another episode. Okay, moving on, we have the SCMRS Mark I, also known as the Single Chamber Multi-Rail System. It's really hard for me to read these instructions. The text is like super, super small. The instructions seem important too. I'm trying my best to remember. I gotta press like one or two apparently pretty quickly when this thing spawns in. All right, here it is. Oh, that's a lot of magnets. All right, ready? There we go. All right, I don't really know what I just did. Let's, let's push some buttons and see what happens. I'm assuming I can aim. Yeah, there we go. It's interesting looking at those. All right, I think it is active now. So R, whoops. All right, so F, ooh. See, now that is what the Gustav should have been doing. Right there. We have two different firing modes, by the way. We have cannon and bomb. So this is the cannon version. Very strong for such a small, you know, projectile. All right, now let's switch. I think number two switches to the bomb version. There we go, and I think R. Whoa, okay, hold on. Let me aim up in the air. Oh, look at the distance. Oh, we have fireworks. Look at that, we have actual fireworks. I've never done this in this game. I've never just fired these up into the air like that. We have fireworks and instruments of destruction. Okay, that's pretty fun. I could create a whole fireworks show if I wanted to. Oh. Oh man, that just destroyed the tower. All right, yeah, magnets are like an essential part of projectiles in this game. You can just enhance your projectile. Oh, that building just got disintegrated. All right, I think I've got one more left and it's another historical one. Yep, so this is the Da Vinci tank. Made by Cat and Twisty. Oh, there's actually a credit in the description so I can see it. So you guys probably already knew this, but the Da Vinci tank, whoa, this thing's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Um, but it was an actual real concept by Da Vinci himself. And whoa, how was this? These are like glitched into each other, but I guess the collisions don't matter. I'm, I'm really, I wanna see inside of this thing. 
This thing looks like it was really complex to build. I'm impressed with this, actually. Man, it, it looks like it operates just about as well as the original design would have been expected to operate. In case you're unaware of the original design, here are some images of the original drawings from Da Vinci's notes. So you can see a little glimpse into the inside here with the four wheels, and you can also just see what it looked like from the outside. Apparently it had like 32 cannons though, which is way more than what we're seeing here, and we just don't have that freedom of building those tiny little angles uh, in a game like this. But yeah, this was drawn up apparently in 1485, so just a little while ago. And it's pretty much self-explanatory, but it was basically designed to be an armored tank that would, you know, protect anybody inside and be able to just shoot in all directions. Although I can't imagine with 1400s technology what it would be like to load 32 individual barrels with what? How many people can you fit in here? One, two? All while trying to maneuver these wheels with like manually controlled cranks and stuff. So yeah, it had some logistical issues, but um, hey, I mean, Leonardo was a busy guy. He was painting stuff. He was trying to fly. You know, he just had a lot of stuff on his plate. You can't expect everything to be a hit. All right, but let's see how it works in this game. Wait, do I have individual? Oh, I have individual control over eight can. Oh, that glass was loud. And these cannons fire in twos. Okay. <laughs> it's so slow. <laughs> Rightly so. So obviously I can fire forward if I want to. Like, it's not... I can't imagine it was going to be that efficient of a vehicle to actually drive around and try to use. Now I can shoot to the right side and the left side once I figure out which button does the left side. There we go. Now I can shoot into the side building there. All right, what if I press everything at the same time? I don't have that many. F oh, yeah, I do. There we go. There we go. Ultimate destruction. It's really not, though. You know, if there were 32 cannons lining this thing, maybe it might be a little bit more destructive. We're only seeing the power of, I think, eight around the uh, the base here, plus these four. All right, everything again. Let's see what happens now. I think almost nothing happened. The building, actually, the building over on the right is experiencing some damage from the single cannon that's firing at it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. We took one down. Yay. I'm really curious, like, how are all of these cannons actually supposed to be operated? I almost feel like one or two guys with, like, a single handheld rifle, if they could just turn and aim where they want to aim, it would be more efficient than this. Because, I mean, imagine, you do have 32 of them, so you have a lot of angles covered, but if someone is just in between them, like, you have to try to turn the entire tank to adjust that angle, and, like, you're not really going to be able to see what's going on on the outside very well. So if you just had a guy with a handheld gun that just moves it rather than 32 individual barrels, I feel like that would be a little bit more effective. Where well, Leonardo da Vinci was a lot smarter than I am, so maybe he understood something that I'm missing. There is also another interesting little debate about this machine here. It seems like there was a lot of inherent flaws with it, especially in the gearing mechanism, which was pretty basic and Leonardo seems like a guy smart enough to know what was wrong with his gearing. So some sources theorize that he may have intentionally built those flaws in because he was actually anti-war. So if this design was ever used, he may have intentionally built it to fail because he didn't want it to succeed. And then there's the other argument that as an inventor and engineer, it's not uncommon for them to include flaws and missing information in their notes and blueprints to protect them from being stolen from other people. So there's a couple of different possibilities on why this thing was designed exactly the way it was designed, even with some of the flaws of it. Oh, there we go. That one was kind of effective. <laughs> So there you have it, some more awesome creative ways of destroying things. Some realistic, some not so realistic. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find on the channel right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.